Um, ladies and gentlemen, what they're asking us to do for this problem is they say write the equation for the hyperbola, all right? So what we need to do for this problem is, first of all, when writing the equation, we need to determine, are we going to have a transverse axis, that transverse axis that's going to be horizontal or vertical? So Ricardo, when I look up here, I can see, remember, the transverse axis is the axis that connects your vertices, your center, your other vertices, and your two foci, which we don't know where they're at, actually. So by looking at this, is my transverse axis vertical or horizontal? Vertical, right? So therefore, we need to remember what is the equation for a hyperbola that has a vertical transverse axis. So the equation, remember, is y minus k squared minus x minus h squared equals 1. And remember, hyperbolas was always a squared the minus the b squared. Right? These two are subtracted. So since it's vertical, our y is over our a. Remember, hyperbolas, the a and b don't change. It's always a squared minus b squared. Um, I'll be there in just a second. So they have y minus k squared. Okay. Everybody good? All right. Um, so now what we're going to simply do is we need to determine what our h, our k, I'm sorry, our k, our h, and our a and our b. If we can figure those out, then we have found the equation, right? So remember, the distance from our center to our vertice, well, first of all, we know, how do we know this is the center? Because actually, they didn't tell us that. Remember, the center is halfway between our two vertices. So the distance of our vertices, which is our transverse axis, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, halfway between there. We obviously know it would be right at 0, 0, right? So we can say the center is 0, 0, which is h, k, right? So therefore, a is going to be how far do we have to travel from the center to our vertice? Three units. So we could say a equals 3. Now, b is our covertice, and we don't have a value for b here. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different. Um, now, we don't even have c either, so we don't have the foci for this problem. However, there is something that's important about hyperbolas. For an hyperbola, remember, we have asymptotes. And the equation for asymptotes is y equals, for a vertical transverse axis, is k plus or minus a over b times x minus h. So that's the equation for your, vert, for your asymptotes for a vertical transverse axis. Now, do we know what h and k are in this problem so far? 0, 0, right? And do we know what a is? a is 3. So right now we have 0 plus or minus 3 over b times x minus 0, which really is y equals plus or minus 3 over bx. OK, so now if I can figure out what b is, I know what, or if I can figure out what my slope is, because really that's what that is, right? The slope. If I can figure out what the slope is, I can determine b. So I went and looked at my asymptotes, and when I noticed the asymptote has a point, the point that it lies on is 5, 3. And if I notice, each one of these crosses at that exact same point, or a very similar point. All right. So what we can determine is, even if it's plus or minus, doesn't matter the plus or minus, but what I can determine now, if I'm rising 3, how far do I have to go over? 5. So therefore, I can now say that my equation on my asymptotes are plus or minus 3 over 5x. All right. So therefore, now I know that b equals 5. So since I now know that b equals 5, and my center is 0, 0, the equation on my line is going to be y squared over 9 minus x squared over 5 <coughs> equals 1. And that's it. So the main important thing, guys, again, is determining is it vertical or horizontal transverse axis, and then determining a, b, or c. Yes, Giovanna? I just looked at the graph and saw that it went through the point 5, comma 3. As long as it's on the asymptote, yes. OK. Hello. <laughs>